Thanks for watching. Today I want to talk about a really important upgrade to your table saw, the outfeed table. Depending on the type of saw you have and the space available, your outfeed table could take many different forms. I want to show you one idea that I think is very functional, as well as a couple of nice compliments to it. This is the setup I've been using. I have a Rockler workbench set up behind my saw, and this has worked pretty well. The bench is on casters, and it's easy enough to slide around if I need to access the back of the saw. My complaint with this setup is that although the height is close to the table saw, it would be much better if it was just a little bit higher. Uh, additionally, there's a lot of dust collection piping behind the bench, and it doesn't sit up against the table saw, so there's a pretty decent gap here where pieces can occasionally fall or get stuck, and that's not what we want. The Rockler roller stand is a nice complement, even with a large outfeed table. It has roller bearings and a solid roller here. It's height adjustable. It works well to assist on feeding material in, as well as catching material coming out the back of the saw. Um, although you do run into some of the same issues using it as an outfeed assistant, um, where material tends to want to either fall short or get stuck coming in. I like to use mine to the side of the table saw to help feed in uh, wide pieces of sheet goods. For my outfeed table, I want something that not only assembles quickly so I can get back to other projects, but um, also that's going to be versatile and serve a purpose or two. You may be familiar with Rockler's line of adjustable shop stands. These are great for router table setups, machine stands, and workbenches. There are a variety of sizes of stretchers available, two sizes of legs, and a whole bunch of accessories that make the system very customizable. I have parts here for essentially two individual shop stands. One stand has a set of 32 inch legs and the other 28 inch legs. The 32 inch legs will have stationary height adjustable feet on the bottom and the 28 inch legs will have locking casters. Both stands have stretchers that will make them 36 inches long and 24 inches deep. On the stationary stand, we need to squeeze just a little extra height out. The saw stop table is 34 inches high, so by sticking an extra nut on the leg, we get it to a height where we simply need to put the top on, and we'll be right at the level we want to line up with the top of the table saw. These stands assemble very quickly, and a lot of thought has clearly gone into making this accurate and simple. The holes are square, and the provided bolts have a square head, so tightening everything up with one wrench or ratchet is a snap. I found it easiest to assemble the front and back first, then add the 24 inch stretchers to get the unit to stand on its own, then tighten everything up. On the stationary stand, I'm going to use some of Rockler's drawer slide brackets. This system lets you mount a variety of drawer slides to the frame, which is a quick and accurate way to get a ton of storage space on this stand. With the slides installed, I'm going to set it behind the saw and adjust it into position. The rolling stand assembles exactly the same way, but I'm not putting drawer slides on that one. For the top, I'm mostly going to just cut down some sheet good scraps I already have and layer them to get the height I want. You can set up your outfeed tabletop pretty much any way you'd like, the only thing that really matters is that the top can't be higher than the top of the table saw or material is going to get stuck as it feeds off the back of the saw. You're better off to be just a hair lower on the outfeed table than to cut it too close and have that lip that catches material all the time. The stand is pre-drilled with screw holes for attaching the top, so that goes on very quickly. My saw stop has a 90 degree bracket all the way down the back of the saw, so I use that as a support and a mounting point. I added some cutoffs here to get the height where I wanted it, and screwed up through the pieces into the top to hold everything in place. It's up to you how you want to finish the top of the table. You could leave it bare wood, glue down a piece of laminate countertop, and so on. I opted for these panels of dry erase board that I found at Home Depot. They're easy to transport and work with, they let pieces slide across the top of the table very easily, and you get the added benefit of being able to scribble notes and sketches on top of the table with a dry erase marker. I countersunk screws to attach mine in case I wanted to replace them. You could definitely glue them too. If you do use screws, just make sure they're below the surface so material doesn't get caught on them. It takes a little bit of work to get everything leveled and lined up. 
my garage floor has a pretty drastic slope to it just behind the saw, so that made things a little more difficult. It's worth the time to make sure you don't have one surface higher than another, though. Now I'm going to make some drawers for the stationary cabinet. You can get really fancy with these, but mine are just going to be very simple. I joined the sides with a couple dominoes and some glue, and fired a little finish nail in to hold things in place until the glue dried. Now let's take a look at the finished product. One other accessory Rockler has for the shop stands is this apron, which is a close relative to the clip-on pouches you may have seen in my previous video. I have this on the end of the stationary stand, and it's great for storing assembly tools, pens, pencils, remotes, and really any other little thing that tends to clutter up the top of my table saw. You can see I haven't filled in all my drawers yet. I'm working on deciding how best to use the storage. I'm planning to use the drawers mostly for storing table saw jigs and sleds, so I might actually spread them out a little to get tall jigs in here, and only have a couple drawers. The nice thing about this setup is it is very easy to add or remove drawers as storage needs change. The rolling stand is just open underneath, but that gives me easy access to the dust piping if needed. Of course, I can roll the whole stand out of the way, too. The stretchers are set up to accept a shelf underneath here, which I may very well do to store some extra, smaller material. So here's the whole table assembled. One of the major benefits to this setup is the ability to undo a little sash lock under the table, unlock the casters, and then break half of the table away. I can use this cart around the shop, uh, access the back of the saw, or place it behind the stationary stand to support very long stock. I've also incorporated a vise on the end of the rolling stand. The shop stand stretchers are set up to accept this, and it mounts just to the underside of this plywood top, which is several pieces sandwiched together. Finally, I have one of Rockler's dust right cord and hose holders here too. This actually travels all around my shop because it removes so easily from the work surface. I have a boom arm on my Festool MFT, but this is really quick to just stick to the edge of a work surface, keep power cords and hoses up and out of the way. And when I need to move it to use my extension wing router table, it only takes a second. I hope you found this idea and video useful, and perhaps it has inspired you to build an outfeed table yourself. Using these shop stands is a great way to get a very flexible, sturdy table put together in a very short amount of time. If you have any questions about this project, I'd love to hear them. Just leave me a comment or visit my website. Thanks.